everyone. So I really like this demonstration because it combines physics and chemistry. So it's really simple. I've got a little candle and it's floating actually in some orange squash. And what I'm going to do is light the candle and then I'm going to put a clear glass just over the top of it so that the glass bottom touches the bottom of the white dish. So the candle's now lit and I'm going to put the glass over the top. So initially that flame is going to start to heat the air inside the glass which expands. As it does this it uses up the oxygen because the flame is still burning away and that means the pressure inside the glass is less than outside the glass and so the orange squash actually gets forced up into the glass beaker. Now when the candle goes out the air contracts and even more liquid gets forced up into the glass. So that's all well and good however the oxygen is actually being turned to carbon dioxide, so there is still gas in the glass, which raises the question, why is the pressure lower? Well, the pressure is lower in the glass because two oxygen molecules actually get converted to only one carbon dioxide. You also get two water molecules, but these get condensed inside the glass. So for every two oxygen molecules, you only get one carbon dioxide. Right, to recap, we've actually got quite a lot going on in this simple experiment. When the glass initially covers the candle, well, you're going to get heating of the air, that causes the air to expand, and that helps keep the liquid level initially down. At the same time, those oxygen molecules are being converted to less carbon dioxide molecules, so you have a reduction in the number of molecules inside the glass. However, the really key bit is that when the candle goes out, the cool air starts to contract and that creates a vacuum. And it's that vacuum which means that the pressure outside pushing on the liquid is stronger and so it forces the liquid up inside the glass. And it goes quite a long way, all the way up to that pink line. So you've got multiple things going on here, both physics and chemistry. Um, it's important to note that here the vacuum created by the contracting air is dominating. It's a more significant factor than the change in the number of air molecules. I think that's why I like this simple experiment so much. I mean, it's just a candle and a glass and some coloured liquid. But to explain what you're seeing, you need both physics and chemistry. And there's some real subtleties in how the two play off against each other. But anyway, that is the basics of the candle in the jar experiment. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, thanks for watching these short videos, and hopefully I'll see you next week for some more fun science. Bye!